chapters, we have, I think, agreed that there is much, much work to be done in the field of education. We have to ensure that at the end of their school careers and the beginning of their university careers, if they go on to university, we want to ensure that we are producing 21st century citizens, Guyanese citizens of the 21st century. Which is to say that we must, I believe, inculcate in all of our students a real love of country and a passion for service. This to me is really crucial if we are talking about producing the 21st century Guyanese. I have said on numerous occasions that while I, of course, commend entirely your efforts in terms of academic achievement and today we are faced with people who have excelled in the examinations. I am very, very happy to congratulate you, but urge you to believe that you are at the beginning of the road. It is, of course, always a great pleasure to receive awards and to have your efforts recognized and to be congratulated for all the discipline and hard work that you have put into your schooling. But I want to say that, and in this, as I said, Mr. Hamilton has anticipated me, that we want to ensure that the education you receive in the classrooms is going to be a rounded education. I am very, very happy that you are excelling academically. Don't get me wrong. But I believe it is not enough. I think we need to concentrate on some of the other things. Things that are perhaps not as readily identifiable as marks in an examination. But I want to concentrate on sports. And I have really urge that all of the sports facilities throughout the country, the school sports facilities must be upgraded so that physical education and actual sports can be enjoyed by our children. And in terms of music, I would of course love to be able to put a steel orchestra in every school in the country. But I would have to be serious battle with my colleagues in the cabinet because we are already hogging, you know, uh, more than our fair share of the national budget. So that is not something we can afford at the moment. But what I do know is that every child was born with a musical instrument. So I want to encourage the formation and training of choirs throughout the schools. And I hope that by the time our commemoration activities come around, our independence anniversary, we would be able, in fact, to put on a national concert where our finalists in the choir competition can actually perform. I think this is achievable, and it is something we should strive to do. Because examinations, of course, are important, very important. And we want to ensure that wherever you go after school, your examination results will carry you further and carry you onward. But in the end, we want to ensure that our children in the classrooms are contented and happy children. I have very, very strong views on corporal punishment. I sat on a special select committee of the National Assembly where corporal punishment was one of the items that we were asked to address. And I think we were unanimous in our view that beating children was really something that we frown on, discourage, and essentially make unlawful. What we need instead is to counsel children. So we need to strengthen our counseling facilities and mechanisms and try to deal with discipline in the schools 
in that way. I believe it is not only more humane, but I believe in the end its results are more lasting. I think that the beating of children encourages children to believe that violence is a solution to anything. And I'm sure that we are going to succeed in this because we have, I believe, national consensus on this matter. Um, apart from the issue of corporal punishment, we have to, as I said, resuscitate many of the positive things that some of us remember from our long ago uh, school days. I met um, last night, I believe, um, with some of the visiting um, QC alumni. And uh, it was good to be among them. Queen's College is a, you know, closely knit family. And we were able to, I think, have many exchanges. And I think that, you know, people who leave Guyana, go abroad, and work very hard to contribute to their school, the school which in fact um, nurtured them, educated them. And there are many people who leave Guyana, go abroad, but continue to carry Guyana in their hearts and continue to contribute from a distance to improving, helping us, helping with our libraries, helping with our facilities, and we congratulate them, and we tell them that we are fully appreciative of the efforts they are making, and that these efforts are not going to be in vain. So, I just want to reinforce some of these things. One, I want to see happy children in the classroom. I believe we have a school feeding program in the hinterland and we are rolling out more school feeding um, in, in some of the you know, most needy communities on the coast. Because I also believe that hungry children cannot learn. So we must attend to the nutritional needs of the children. We must attend to their intellectual needs. We must widen their notion of culture. And above all, because we live in the kind of society in which we live, we should try to make sure that we achieve national cohesion in our schools. Our schools must be places of healing. We understand we come from you know, a society with historic divisions. And we must fight every inch of the way to deal with those divisions, not hide from them but try to craft strategies in education and in all areas of national life that will, in effect, address this issue of our historic divisions and bring about healing and reconciliation. I believe that we are in the education system, in the schools of the country. This is the most ideal place to nurture an idea of togetherness and reconciliation. And I have charged students in the past, and I charge you today, you high-performing students, that I believe that you have a special duty. And the duty is to ensure that you join in all efforts around you, and where efforts are not being made, you initiate them to bring about the necessary healing and reconciliation, without which we will not go forward as a nation. We want you as, you know, the citizens of the 21st century, Guyanese citizens, to work with us to create the kind of country that you yourselves would want to pass on to your own children. I thank you very much and congratulations on your achievements. People try to figure out who they are. This is a song to our generation.
chairperson, Mrs. Mrs. Evelyn Hamilton. She knows why she said that um, I believe the children um, should be in palaces because she knows that um, several years ago we were in a certain institution together. She said children are kings and they should be in palaces. She's quite right. Thank you, Evelyn. Uh, Minister of Education, Dr. Rupert Rupenrein, Ministers of the Government, Members of the National Assembly, Chief Education Officer, Officers of the Ministry of Education, Students, Parents, Teachers, Members of the Media, Special Invitees, Good morning. Today we honor, at the close of Education Month, our outstanding academic performance for the academic year 2014-2015. We honor you, the awardees, because of your performance, because you are worthy of the acclaim of the entire nation. We congratulate you and hear your achievements. You exemplify the high standards at which our country's educational system aims. Today we speak mainly to students in the secondary school. We want in our entire education system a function that will produce citizens of quality, citizens who will be happy to remain here in Guyana to build our wonderful our beautiful nation. We want a system that will extend access to the information superhighway to support the education of our entire nation. The Constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, our Supreme Law, prescribes the Article 27, and I quote from our Constitution. Every citizen has the right to free education from nursery to university, as well as at non-formal places where opportunities are provided for education and training. It is the duty of the state to provide education that will include curricular design to reflect the cultural diversities of Guyana and disciplines that are necessary to prepare students to deal with social issues and to meet the challenges of the modern technological age. We are guided by our constitution. It is the supreme law. Our education system, therefore, must aim at ensuring that students graduate with the knowledge, with the skills, with the attitudes, with the values that will allow them to secure gainful employment and contribute to the development of society. Our secondary education system, therefore, must ensure that our graduates are able to participate not only in Guyana, but in a very highly competitive global economy. We are met here today, therefore, to commend, to congratulate those of you who excelled in our secondary schools. And as I said earlier this month, Education Month, I learned from Mr. Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, that Usain Bolt doesn't stop running at 50 meters. And you too, although you're qualified now in the secondary system, don't quit. Just keep on. Let us go to the third level. Our education system, although we aim at universal secondary education, USC, is not yet universal. It is unequal. And we have to remedy that inequality. It is a rebuke to our belief in equality, our belief in inclusivity, our belief in meritocracy. We need to correct the problems in our education sector. Every day, Five children drop out of our secondary schools. What happens to them? Every year, half of the students 
who undertake to write our national grade six assessment do not satisfactorily uh, write those examinations in accordance with the standards which have been set by the Ministry of Education. This means that from beginning to end, our secondary education system has not been producing the desired results. It means that half of the students who enter the secondary school system might not actually qualify to be there. This performance impacts on the quality of the results that we see in the secondary school system. Fewer than half of those who wrote English A in mathematics in the 2015 Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate examinations secured passes. The Ministry of Education itself described as unsatisfactory the performance of students in the core science subjects of physics and chemistry. This performance is unacceptable in the knowledge-based world in which we live. Guyana simply cannot continue along this trajectory if it is to compete with our sisters in the Caribbean. Moreover, there are troubling disparities in education attainment between the coastland and the hinterland, between schools in Georgetown and the rest of the coastland. When I was young, many, many years ago, the top five secondary schools were Queen's College, Bishops, St. Stanislaus, St. Roses, and St. Joseph. All five of them located in Georgetown. Now that I'm old, the top five secondary schools have not changed. They're still located in Georgetown. Maybe it's good for those students, but as president of all Ghana, I would like to see that in every single region of this country, we have a secondary school that could be described as top. Not only top five, but the top ten. I'm afraid... I'm afraid that if we do not correct this fault, between Coastal and Hinterland, between Georgetown and rural areas, we will develop a form of educational apartness. And to use that horrible Dutch word that people of my generation are familiar with, educational apartheid. It means the same thing, actually. We must avoid, we must avert the danger of children being separated along lines of gender, along lines of social class, or along lines of geographical location. A pyramid of educational provision has been erected. And what we see developing is a number of well-funded private schools at the top, and many struggling local schools at the bottom. Of the 111 secondary schools, which I believe exist in this country, 65, the majority, are already private, and 55 are public. In other words, the private-public divide is already given the advantage the private secondary schools. And the gap is starting to widen in terms of performance. Too many parents in our country are left to scramble for their own places in this hierarchy, using whatever resources they have in their possession, be it money, be it religious faith, with private tutoring in order to overcome the gaps that are opening up in our education system. We want a system that erases inequalities. 
we want a system that erases inequities. So we need to reshape our education policies. And that is why Dr. Rupert Ryan has been appointed as a Minister of Education, because he's a believer in educational access and educational equalities. We have to arrest the decline in our education system to reduce disparities in the performance between regions and between schools and to better prepare our graduates, particularly you in our secondary school system for the world of work. Our education system must continue to reward excellence, but it must also strive to remove inequalities. If we do not reward meritocracy, standards will fall. We must continue to encourage our students, as we're doing here today, to strive for excellence. But at the same time, we must ensure that those students who do not have access to the best resources and facilities are also given the opportunity to achieve excellence. The success of a few should not be the sole defining feature of our secondary school system. We cannot judge the quality of our education system purely by the performance of the top 1% of the population. We must assess the quality of our entire system to see how all of our students perform. There are over 70,000 secondary school children in Guyana. How many of them will be attending ceremonies like this next year and in the years to come? Guyana aims at universal secondary education for all. We aim at ensuring that every single child, everyone, receives a sound secondary education. And last Sunday I was on the current team and I was happy to be present at the ceremony in which some school children in the East Bank were peace area were being given bicycles to enable them to get to school. Tomorrow, at this time, I'll be a charity waterfront taking possession of another school boat to ensure that children in the upper Pomeroon could get to school at charity. This is what we're aiming at, ensuring that every child has a place in school. Every child can get to a secondary school. It is the starting point towards ensuring that we reduce disparities and that we allow for greater equality in our education system. We therefore need a system that ensures that Every child attends secondary school. Education is the gateway out of poverty, out of inequality. Education will unlock opportunities for employment for our young people. Education will help our young people to participate in the local and the global economy. Every child, therefore, must be in school if the child is to overcome poverty and inequality. Any child who does not have access to secondary school will be disadvantaged and too frequently forever. Secondly, every teacher must be a university graduate. Not just a trained teacher, but a university graduate. And we hope that over the next 15 years, between 2015 and 2030, during the SDGs, our teachers will all get the opportunity to be exposed to tertiary education. I cannot understand the concept of an untrained teacher. Would you go into an airplane with an untrained pilot? have to be operated on by an untrained doctor. I do not believe in untrained teachers. And during my tenure as president, and I'm sure during Dr. Lutheran's tenure 
as a minister, we want to ensure that every single teacher is trained. And I think that would be a turning point in our education system. So it is necessary to have properly educated teachers if we are to have properly educated students. We will therefore, over the next five years, over the next 10 years, over the next 15 years, you can see that they don't intend to go away. We will ensure that greater emphasis is placed on the education of teachers. Not only the Civil Party College of Education, but also at the University of Ghana. And third, every school must have a well-equipped laboratory and a library. Your Minister of Education, your President, had the opportunity to go to a secondary school. It's one of the best laboratories in the country, and one of the best school libraries of its day. Every secondary school must have an adequately equipped science and computer laboratory. Access to the information supply is no longer optional. It's an obligation for the education system. It's obligatory. Every school must have access to the information supply way. From the moment you enter school, you must be able to connect to the internet. Every single school must have Wi-Fi.
There will be less trafficking in persons. There will be less unemployment. There will be less crime. And finally, and perhaps the best reason of all for education, you can get rich. You can get rich if you're educated. Ladies and gentlemen, young men and women, if Guyana is to survive, if Guyana is to keep abreast with the rest of the Caribbean, we must overcome the problems in our education system. The performance of our students over the years in regional examinations testify that we have the ability, we have the talent. You are evidence of this. But there must be more of you. Not only in Georgia, not only in the top five schools, but in all 55, all 111 secondary schools. You were the products of our secondary education system. You were the exemplars of excellence. You were the evidence of the great things which could be achieved by harnessing the intellectual capabilities of our Guyanese people. We wish you continued success those of you who, are, who will be granted awards today, we congratulate you and commend you. We know that you work hard. But we hope that your thirst for knowledge never quenches. We hope that your desire for self-improvement never diminishes. We hope that your commitment to serving Diana remains steadfast, remains unceasing. We wish you success, and may God bless all of you. Thank you.